When I first switched to Linux, I had one big problem. I didn't know what tools to use. Yes, I know we have Watch, there is CAT, there is DF, they work. But coming from Windows, everything just felt a little bit clunky. It always felt like something was missing. Well, it turns out that there's a hidden layer of Linux tools that nobody really talks about. You know, tools that take some of these boring commands and turn them into straight up superpowers. Today, I'm going to be showing you six of the most oddly useful, weirdly elegant, and just plain cool Linux tools that I've found. And odds are you've never used some of these ones. So let's get straight into it. You've probably used the watch command before. You know, the one that runs another command every couple of seconds so you can sit back and pretend you're monitoring something important. But watch is, let's be honest, a bit boring. No colors, no flair, just raw output looping like it's 1955. So let's replace it with something a bit cooler, a tool called VD. Now, VD is basically watch, but with a terminal UI, smooth interface, real-time updates, keyboard controls to pause, and tweak internal speeds, all built in. I use it when I want to monitor something in real time, but still feel like I'm in control. You know, for example, I could run this command, and just like that, I'm tracking the top CPU hungry processes every two seconds. It's perfect when I'm troubleshooting something like when a rogue app starts melting down my system. It's fast, clean, and written in Rust, which ends its some extra points. I think this would be best to use if you're monitoring logs, checking resource usage during test, or watching system load live while running heavy scripts. Basically, anytime I want a visual pause on the system. Moving on, there is something oddly satisfying about automation. That moment when your computer performs an action, the moment you tweak a file or perform a certain action. Well, that's where the ENTR tool comes in. If you're a developer, a designer, or even just someone who edits config files way too often, the ENTR will feel like magic. It listens silently to the changes, and the second something gets touched, it runs whatever command you tell it to. For this one, you don't need any polling, no setting up watchers, no headache. Just pipe it in the files and let it do the rest. I use ENTL when I'm editing shell scripts or working on small apps. So instead of running my scripts manually every time I save, I just let ENTL handle it. For example, for this script called test that I've created, I can use this code. Now, anytime I make a change to test and save it, I am told the script just ran with a date and a time showing. Of course, this is an elementary example, but you can swap that for a script, a command, or even notify send if you're just feeling dramatic. And the cool part is that this one works beautifully with both big and small projects. You can use it with React apps, Rust builds, batch scripts, even LaTeX. As long as what you're working with saves to the dicks, ENTRL can react to it. So for this one, if you're thinking, oh, I wish my code could just run every time I save it, then that's the tool you need. Next, let's talk about CAT. I know you've heard about this one. It's the classic way to dump a file's content onto your terminal. It works, it's reliable, but let's be honest, it's about as exciting as watching a drywall. So rather than use CAT, you should switch to BAT. It's a fully evolved cat with syntax highlighting, line numbers, git diff integration, paging, and themes. I usually use this one daily, seriously, whether I'm inspecting config files, reviewing scripts, or just trying to figure out what I broke. But always shows me the content with line numbers, syntax, highlighting, and even git changes. So for instance, the test file I created, if I run this command, all of a sudden, I could see it in my terminal. And if you run BAT inside a Git repo, it automatically highlights what's changed, so you know what you've been messing with instantly. If you need to pipe content into it, no problem, it smartly detects whether to act as a pager or just print clear outputs. So you could even use it like this with this command. And now your call output isn't just flying past your eyes like a blur. It's tied, readable, and scrollable. 
So if you're still out there using CAT, I think it's time to make this little upgrade. Moving on, let's face it. Navigating different directories in the terminal can get quite messy. You've got LS, you've got CD. Maybe you're grepping store for using three for a quick overview. And before you know it, your eight commands dip just to find one file. Well, that's where the broad command comes in. It's like your terminal's personal GPI, but it's quite smarter, faster, and way more elegant to use. So when I feel buried in folders, especially when hunting for something buried in my projects folder, I just type brot. And instantly I'm dropped into a live interactive three view of the current directory. You can see subfolders, file sizes, hidden files, all color coded as well, collapsible and searchable in real time. If you want to go to something, just start typing the folder or file name. Fuzzy search kicks in and immediately hit enter and you are there. But it even gets a bit better than that. You can delete, copy, move, preview and open files without ever leaving the broad interface. And of course, it's even got this help mode if you need to see all the commands because Brot isn't just efficient. It's actually designed to teach you as you use it. And yes, it's possible to make Brot replace your CD command entirely. All you need to do is run the Brot install command and its CD is gone. So if you're still out there using LS and CD, maybe it's time to make this small upgrade. Moving on, I must confess, this one feels a little bit like a guilty pleasure. I use pastel whenever I'm working on CLI tools, tweaking dot files or just geeking out over colors. One of the most surprisingly useful thing it does is converting color formats. So if I need the HSL version of a hex code, I've done this more times than I've expected. I could just run a simple command. And just like that, I've got the HSL values for that vibrant orange. Or maybe I just want to see the color right in the terminal. You can pass in RGP, hex, or even multiple colors. This tool will instantly show a clean breakdown with color preview and all its formats. It's great when I'm trying to compare a palette or fine tune a terminal color scheme. And if you want to even go deeper, you can generate complementary colors, mix tones, or even pick from an interactive color selector. So one time I was building a Team TUI and I needed just the right background that would contrast but not clash. Pistel helped me out and it was just so quick and seamless. I didn't even have to leave the terminal. I, I would say the best use case for this is if you want to test, you need to convert or analyze colors directly from the CLI. It's a gem for anyone who wants to work on Teams, custom prompts, or just wants to make their terminal setup look like, you know, an upgrade of the BIOS. And finally, you know how DF-H is supposed to tell you your disk usage? Yeah, well, technically it does. But there's a tool that does it better. This tool shows your mounted drives in a way that's not just readable, but actually beautiful. It's called disk, but spelled with a Y rather than an I. So it's going to give you a detailed breakdown of all your mounted drives with clean formatting, smart size labeling, color coding, and even mount point descriptions. It does this all in one single glance. So rather than fighting with commands just to find out where your space went, run disk and that's it. And there you have it, six powerful Linux tools that just upgraded your workflow. Which one are you installing first? Please let me know down below. Of course, I read all the comments. And if you found a new favorite, of course, drop a like on this video. Remember to share the video also. And if this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe. Till the next one, stay safe out there.